back. And he brings it all the way back. Left back. Jesse Inquist open, coming across the middle, and breaks two tackles for the touchdown. Will have it, wide open. I'm not exactly sure. Side line, and he's going to go. Touchdown, third play, offensive play, with a little swing. Welcome, Hillers fans, to the season opener of Hopkinton football. We're here at David Hughes Stadium on the campus of Hopkinton High School. And as the Hillers looks like they're poised to take the field, here they come now. This is Jay Gulfy doing the play-by-play -play tonight. I'm here with Don Lehman. And Don, here come the Hillers. Here we go, opening season 2018. And look at these new uniforms. I'm loving this. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Hopkinton football. They were due. Nice. I love it. High expectations for this team this year, Don. Well, you know, last year they finished um, with a team record, 11 wins. They went as far as any Hopkinton football team has in the past. Um, they've got 18 kids, or eight, at least 18 seniors returning. I'll look up uh, the details here in a second. But it's a big senior class. They have a returning starting quarterback. They have a returning offensive line. They have some uh, returning skill players. So, yeah, I would expect them to have a pretty good year here, Jay. Poised for a big run this year. Led by their senior captain and play caller, Ryan Kelleher, on offense. They have Ryan Kelleher at offense, and um, they have Matt Brown's going to be a, a senior running back, number 24. You're going to have Luke DeLoya, number 7, is going to be a, a wide receiver. Cole Salyers, number 3, is a wide receiver, number 3. Brendan Kelly, number 12, is a senior. Zach Frank is a senior. And then you have your returning offensive line, Ben Powers, Cal Stuckel. Theo Cavallo, Noah Batello, and Lucas Monahan. That's right, Theo, the captain of the line, a returning starter, I believe. And Don, is it me, or did Kelly look like he grew three inches and put on 20 pounds? Well, I think every, all these kids always look bigger every year, and uh, I think that we're just shrinking, Jay. <laughs> Could be. I think there's a lot of that going on. But it, I'll tell you what, these new uniforms are cool. They, you got the green pants, you got the green shirt, white hat. Um, we would also like to welcome uh, our YouTube. We're streaming live on YouTube. Say hi to everyone on YouTube. Say hi to everybody on YouTube. I just got uh, the instructions from Mike Terosian. Uh So this is the first live streaming that we're doing, and it puts a little bit added pressure, but it doesn't add to our salary, unfortunately, Jay. <laughs> Looks like the Hopkinton captains are out there meeting the Whalen captains. I see number 45, uh, Mr. Brown, who unfortunately had a knee injury last year playing lacrosse, so... Uh, they'll miss Ryan Brown in the, in the D-line this year, Don. Yeah, that's a big loss. And, you know, you, you, the first thing you think about is the kid, you know, going right. into his senior year. Uh, had a heck of a junior year. Coming back, he would have, you know, he was a TVL All-Star last year. Hurt his knee in lacrosse? Lacrosse? I somewhere. believe lacrosse. Um, whatever. He hurt his knee, and he's out with an ACL. And I think he's, uh, I think the best case scenario for him is to be back on Thanksgiving Day. And wouldn't that be a nice story? In in the meantime, Don, Coach Gerard's got Ryan Brown coaching the defensive line. Yeah, he's done a great job keeping him involved. Um, he, I mean, he's a captain, so um, you know, Coach Gerard, who's who's just been such a tremendous leader of this program for the last nine years. You know, obviously was going to keep Ryan involved and. And Ryan, without him knowing him personally, I know he's, uh, I'm sure he's a leader, and you're seeing it right here. Uh, yeah, a lot of poise, a lot of maturity for number 45, for sure. Don, what do we know about Wayland? Uh, Wayland is returning three, it sounds to be pretty good players. They've, uh, they've got the defending um, MVP for the DCL small, Wellington Piera. Uh, he's a Division I prospect at running back and at linebacker. Um, so he sounds like he's going to be kind of difficult to deal with. And they have Mason Boulevard, who's a quarterback in safety. And he's a senior. He's one of the higher-ranked quarterbacks in the, in, the, uh, in the region. And they've got a big guy, <coughs> offensive lineman, Brooks Jones. He was a DCL small lineman of the year last year. It, it he's returning for his senior year. Right. It seems like Hopkinson kicks off the season every year with Waylon now, Don, and it's always a dogfight. This is always a very, very uh, tough battle. Yeah, it's gone down to the – Pretty much every game has been close. And, and what's interesting about this uh, rivalry, I guess you could call it now, is Coach Gerard is a guidance counselor in Wayland. That's so correct. I know he takes a lot, of, a lot of ribbing during the day. He must be 
he must have good relationships with players on both teams, which oh, must yeah. make it a little tough for him. No doubt. Here's the national anthem. ...directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and berating of players, coaches, and officials. The TBL has adopted a zero tolerance policy. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for creating a fun, welcoming, and positive environment here at HHS. Now, would you all please rise, remove your caps, and direct your attention to the north end zone as band director Craig Hay and the HHS band honor the flag with the playing of our national anthem. Hopkinson High School Band doing a great job with the National Anthem. It's always nice to have the band here. It just adds that uh, that extra atmosphere to a high school football game. I see Coach Scotty Macklin down there. Don looks like he's working with the cheerleaders a little bit right now. Oh, oh yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the Hopkinson swag on. He's already in midseason form right now. Scotty's a legend. New uh, Hopkinson cheerleaders uh, head coach Ashley Pellucci I see on the sideline. She's ready for a new season. Yeah, Ashley's been a long time. Uh, she's been around the uh, cheerleading program a long time. She's a great girl, and uh, Hopkinton cheerleading has always been at the top of, uh, top of the TVL ever since I've been around Hopkinton. All right, Don, it looks like the Hopkinton Hillers are set to receive. We're going to get this game kicked off. It's like Zach Frank back there along with, uh, I don't know if that's the lawyer. Uh, it looks like it's Brown, tw 24. Whoever 24, 24, Matt Brown. Is. Matt Brown. Do we have Brown takes the kick, takes it straight up the middle. Nice return, looks like out to about the 38-yard line where Hopkinson will take the ball. Yeah, Brown fielded that cleanly, and he took it up. There was some really nice blocks there that kind of set up an alley for him. He wasn't touched until he got to about the 30. He put his shoulder down and got another five yards. So that was a nice return, nice start to the season. All right, Don, here comes the Hopkinton offense. We'll get our first look at Ryan Kelleher. Ryan on the verge of, of breaking some pretty big records here, Don. Oh, yeah. Well, when this season's over, maybe when this game's over, Ryan will be the all-time leading quarter, uh, touchdown passer in Hopkinton history. So that's exciting stuff. Brendan Kelly split wide for the Hillers as they go to a spread offense right away, Don. Looks like a jet sweep to Matt Brown, who turns the corner briefly. Short gain of about two yards. Now, Matt Brown, uh, last year didn't play much offense. He was uh, a force on defense, uh, on the defensive line. I actually think he was the linebacker. Um, he didn't play any offense so this year. They have him as a starting running back, and from all accounts, he's been had a great, uh, great camp, and uh, we look forward to watching him. Whalen played that pretty well right there. Yeah, they didn't he give up the edge. Brown brought down by number 21, Wellington Pereira, and I think we're going to be saying that name quite a bit. Yeah, tonight. we want to ISO on that kid. What number is he? Uh, I see him. 21. 21. Cole Salyard's in the game for Hopkinton. It looks like Hopkinton jumped off sides there. Movement. Hopkinton line oh, nice, a little, nice. little anxious. What did he do? Okay. They're going to go back five yards. That'll make it second and 12 from the 38-yard line. 
Looks like uh, Waylon's got a little bit of size in the in the middle there. They've got yeah. number 75. Looks yeah, like a, a big kid. He's a load. That's Brooks Jones, the big returning okay. lineman of the year. All right, there we go. Yeah, Waylon looks pretty big. A couple of defensive backs that are tall too. This is this is always a, a, a nice challenge for the Hopkinton football program. This has been a great uh, great rivalry we've put together here. Second and twelve for Hopkinton again, spread out. Kelleher on the shotgun. Takes the snap, goes over the middle to Deloya for a short gain, maybe two yards or so. As we saw 21 Pereira blitzing up straight up the middle for Whalen there. Yeah, he was picked up. Um, Ryan Brown picked him up nicely. Uh, that's that's a that's a tough combination. You, you got 75, the nose guard going one way. You got Pereira coming up through the A gap. Um, uh, Brown met him. Ste uh, Kelleher stepped up, made a nice little completion to Luke Deloya, and uh, now we got third and eight. Third and eight for Hopkinton. Kelleher in the backfield along with 24 Brown. Kelleher takes a snap, drops, throws a pass. Looks like it's got caught. That. He got it. Caught by Luke Deloya nice for a catch. first down. Very nice catch and throw there. The, uh, the, the offensive line gave Kelleher some time. You know, Ryan Kelleher, and we'll talk about him throughout the game, obviously. Um, one thing that has always impressed me about him is his accuracy. He, um, he gets rid of the ball. He makes decisions quickly. He gets rid of the ball quickly, and he's accurate. And that's a, that's a triple threat when you're a quarterback. Yeah, very mature. Again, is a, a two-year starter. Poised back there in the pocket. Kelleher takes a snap, hands it to, looks like Brown, who drops the ball. Looks like Hopkinson may have gotten it back. Yep, that'll be Hopkinson ball at what looks like the 44-yard line. All right, that was a nice bounce. It, wasn't, it looked like somebody just came in and stripped that off of Ryan. The, the line did not get a great push that time, and uh, there was some tough running, and somebody just came in and knocked the ball out. That'll make it second and eight for Hopkinton. Zach Frank in the game at slot receiver. Look for him to get some touches tonight. Kelleher rolls to his right under pressure, breaks a tackle, throws complete to Deloya for what appears to be another Hopkinton first down. Very nice play by Kelleher there, Don, to avoid that contact. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, Whalen broke through there. Kelleher rolled to the right, had some nice footwork, threw a down and out pass, and again, Luke Deloya just going down on the ground, making a getting his hands underneath the ball and making a great catch. So Kelleher and Deloya hooking up early this 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 game for a couple of nice completions now and conversions. As Hopkinton looks like first and ten at the thirty five. Kelleher in the backfield along with Brown. Keller takes a snap, pitches to Brown to the left, makes a cut and breaks a tackle in a big game by Matt Brown. That was nice vision by Matt there. Yeah, he kind of went running. left, let his block set up, and then he made a nice cut back and, uh, put his, again, put his shoulder down. It looks like he's going to have a little bit of speed. Doesn't look like he's going to be a breakaway guy, but he uh, he's going to be a tough runner, I can tell already. Yeah, yeah, he, he clearly likes to run vertically. It's like first down for Hopkinton at the Whalen 21-yard line. Kelleher back with Brown. Same play, only pitch to the right. Brown that bounces out. Looks like a short gain of maybe a yard. Brought down by Pereira again. Was that Pierre or was that 26? I thought 26 came in there. To Oh, might, have been, might have been Andrew Brogan, 26. Yeah, I thought that's who that was. Um, uh, 75 made a nice. Uh, he was right in on that play too. He's gonna be a. He's gonna be a handful in the middle of that line. Yeah, again, that's that's Brooks Jones, the senior, and he looks like a lineman for sure. Yeah, I was just kind of iso on that. Theo's got his work cut out for him tonight. Got Brown and Zach Frank in the backfield with Kelleher here, on second and nine. Looks like the give is to. Looks like Zach Frank up the middle for a nice gain. 
And you see, that was a great job there. Again, I've got to uh, refocus myself and not watch the center nose guard battle all night. But uh, uh, Theo did a great job on that play. Neutralized 75, and the right guard and right tackle made nice blocks for a positive gain for the Hillers. Third and three for the Hillers now at what looks like about the 14-yard line. Well, this is what we call red zone opportunities, Jay, and you got third and three. You've got to figure this is two-down territory. I don't see Coach Gerard going for a field goal here. Certainly not going to punt. Keller takes it, rolls right, throws, tipped away by Whalen. A very nice play there by, looks like, the linebacker, uh, Jack Brown, junior linebacker for Wayland. But again, like you said, Don, looks like four-down territory here for Hopkinton. Don't be surprised to see a little bit of Matt Brown here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was good defense by Whalen, and that looked like they were prepared for that uh, for that play there. They got some, they, they, they've got some speed. Last year, Hopkinton, one of the the Hillers' strengths was their their overall team speed. Um, so far, it looks like Whalen has that lateral type of speed also. Fourth down and three for Hopkinton. Matt Brown in the backfield along with Kelleher. Snap to Kelleher. He drops back. He throws over oh, the open. middle. Oh. Just misses Deloy over the middle in the end zone. And that'll be a turnover on downs, and Whalen will take over at their own 14-yard line. Good stop by the Whalen defense there, Don. Mike Terosian showing us on YouTube, and uh, I guess our voices look sound <laughs> look better than, our, than what we look like. <laughs> Don't ask for more money, though. <laughs> See, hear that, Jay? Our salary's staying the same. Okay, Don, looks like you're going to get our first look at this Whalen offense. And their, um, their, their, their quarterback, Mason Bolivar. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, one, 11. Of the, he's one of the top quarterbacks um, in the, uh, the DVL small. And it uh, looks like they got 64 over there. There's a big kid. The right the tackle. Right tackle's a certainly huge. Right a guard's big, kid. big, too. We're 75 playing. He's the only playing on Bolivar beach. takes a ball, rolls to his left, cuts it back for a very short game. Game brought down by number 31. Tommy Bernard. Tommy Bernard. Sophomore playing, playing for the Hillers today. Yeah, it looked like looking at the uh, media guide, um, that were provided by Coach Sullivan, who does a fantastic job. He also um, doubles as the uh, Hiller and Hopkinton uh, publicity manager. <laughs> Second well, media six ma for Media Wayland. manager, I should say. Does a fantastic job with it. Bolivar takes a snap, drops back. He's throwing it long down the middle of the field, and that is a great play by the Hopkinton defensive back. Brian Hurley, Brian, he knocking that pass Brian away. Brian Hurley, nice play there. It looked like, you know, what he's got to watch, though, he had his hands on that guy's back there. Um, he's got to watch that moving forward. But that was, he had great coverage, great read on the ball. Third down, this would be a nice uh, third and out here. Third and long here for Wayland. Looks like Hillers are running a five. Similar type of defense, three down linemen, two outside linebackers. Bolivar takes the ball, hands it off. Nice strong run there by Wayland, by their big running back. That's the same kid who plays, that's, that's Pereira running the ball there for Whalen. He is a low down. Yeah, he's got good feet. Uh, if you saw that, that was kind of clogged up on the right side, and then he kind of diddled and daddled with his feet and then uh, cut back towards the middle and made a first down out of it. You're going to have to. It's not One kid's not going to tackle this guy. you got to tackle his legs. I'm told he's six foot one on 235 pounds, Don. That's a, it's a, it's a big That's uh, a big running back big to the Tri-Valley League. Or any league. That'll be first down for Wayland at their own 28. Bolivar back with Pereira. Bolivar takes a snap, drops back. Oh, had a receiver wide open and just missed him. Yeah, you know, this is this is early in the season, Jay. So, you know, we're in the first quarter of the first game. Both quarterbacks look to have a little bit of the little bit of the first game jitters. I mean, 
I don't know. I could watch Ryan Kelleher throw a post, <laughs> you know, and it hit nine, 99 out of 100. And he, and he sailed that one. And looks like this kid here uh, just kind of got nervous and aimed it and sailed this one. So That'll make it second and ten for Wayland. Looks like they were trying to get Hopkinton in a jump on a hard count there, Don, and Hopkinton didn't take the bait. Nice job, line. Bolivar takes a snap, hands it to yep, Pereira, who's got room. Trouble. He is fast. <laughs> That's another big gain by Pereira. Looked like about a 25-yard gain or so. He's going to be a problem, Don. Yeah, the left, defense. Um, there was some nice blocking on the um, – on the right side of Whalen's line, and then the receiver came down and made a nice, uh, nice block down on our end, and um, and 21 did the rest. I'll make it first down for Whalen at their own 49. Whalen quarterback getting the play from the sideline. Looks like some some slight confusion on the Whalen offense. Bolivar takes a snap, keeps it, turns to the right, takes it upfield for another big gain. Nice play action fake there, Don, by the Whalen QB. Yeah, I mean, he uh, they had nice pursuit there. It looked like it was 25 um, for Hopkinton. It was, was a nice pursuit, Zach Levy. And... Um, but there was a, it was a nice misdirection play. And, uh, and Whalen now nice going no for huddle. Whalen. Trying to... Trying to get Hopkinton on their heels a little bit. Whelan set to take the snap. Bolivar takes it. There's a flag on the play. I think that might be defensive offsides. Just judged on the... Still a great play by, by Levy getting in the backfield and forcing the Whalen quarterback out of bounds for a loss. Yeah, Zach Levy looks to be pretty active at the, uh, the linebacker spot for Hopkinton. Let's see what the penalty is. Looks like offsides against the Hillers. They might have been lined up offsides because it didn't look like there was any movement. He could have been, I think, 74 was lined up offsides, I think. That'll make it first down and five now for Wayland. Two minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. As Whalen with some momentum here in their first drive of the season. Here we go. Whalen takes a snap. Bolivar throwing. Has a receiver open outside. Nice Caught and tackled by, it looks like, Levy. That Levy again? 20. Who's that? That 20. Could have been Scanlon on the play. That'll make it second and short for Whalen. Yeah, Tyler Scanlon, outside linebacker. Whalen now at second and short at their own at the Hopkinton 30-yard line. Bolivar and Pereira set in the backfield. Bolivar takes a snap, hands it to Pereira right up the middle for what appears to be a first down. Looks like, like Whalen's offensive line's getting a little bit of a push. A Theo bit. Cavello came uh, came from his defensive line spot, make that tackle, but it was still a first down for Whalen. And um, you know the Hillers had him stopped down here again, third down. So uh, you you can definitely see the size difference. I see I see twenty six. Looks like Ty Doherty playing nose today. Yeah, defensive line. You've got defensive line. You've got uh, there's the crowd. Defensive line, you've got um, Ben Powers, Tyler Doherty at nose, number 26. Pereira and Theo again. Is 65. Oh, no, sorry. Bolivar keeps it on the fake, and he is bullying himself forward inside the 15. Oh, get the ball. Oh, it looks like Whalen dropped the ball. Hopkins takes the ball. it. Luke DeLoya came Luke up with DeLoya that ball. Came up with the loose ball. And I'm not sure if that was a strip. I, I saw 34 come in there. Um, he was uh, The quarterback was twisted and turning. He came in there. Uh, Saparocious and nailed him, and I don't know if the ball popped out there or Deloya stuck his hand in there. I, I don't know, but it's Hiller football, and that's a huge play. A huge play, Don. As it Whalen looked like they were poised to take it in. Here come the Hiller offense, Don. Looks 
Looks like they're taking over at their own 13-yard line. First and 10, Kelleher back with Brown and Frank. Kelleher takes a snap. Looks like the give is to Brown up the middle for a very short gain, if, if not a loss. Yeah, was that 21 that came in and made that tackle? Looked like Pereira came in and made the big hit. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be tough, uh, tough, tough sh uh, sledding there if you're trying, you're trying up the run in the middle of the Whalen defense there. And you got 75 at nose, and you got 21 stacked right behind them for yeah. the most part. 75 looks to be like an immovable object. Yeah, Theo's just got to get – and sometimes when you have a situation like that, you just don't want to give up penetration. You don't, you don't need to blow them off the line. You just need to use your technique and turn them. If it's, if it's going to the left, you, you know, you step that way. If it's going to the right, you just turn them. You don't need to blow them off. Well, that'll do it for the first quarter, Don. A quick first quarter with no scoring. Hopkinton uh, switching sides. They'll take over again at their own 14-yard line. They'll have second and nine. You know, it's interesting. You're right. They're – there was no, uh, there was no scoring, Jay. Um, but there looked like there to be plenty of offense to be had. Both teams had their chances, and like you said, Don, maybe a little early season jitters, a turnover on downs for Hopkinton, and then a turnover deep in the red zone by Wayland. Um, both teams probably kicking themselves a little bit after their first drive. Yeah, that's okay though. They they got to pull some positive things, and you know, I know again, Kelleher is a, he's a veteran. He'll shake that off and. Uh, He's, he's long for God. He's a gunslinger. He'll keep throwing the ball. And, and this kid from Whalen who just fumbled the quarterback there, <laughs> I'm sure he's uh, he'll forget that next time he has the ball in his hands. I'm looking at Neil Kelleher out in the stands. Uh, he's nervous. Neil gets to watch this game tonight. Then he gets to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and drive yeah. to New Jersey to watch older brother Jake play. Yeah, Neil's for, for living. Salve Regina. Lil, Neil's living his best life, which is <laughs> uh, he's got he's smiling all weekend. This is like dream football to watch for him, watching it, uh, quarterback. Uh, his kid quarterback on Friday night and then his other kid quarterback on Saturday afternoon. That's, that's awesome stuff. Completely contrasting styles, though, between the Kelleher brothers, wouldn't you say, Don? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, Jake is more of like a traditional drop back, and um, Ryan is more of kind of like that West Coast uh, uh, kind of deal. Kelleher here to hit the set to take the snap. He takes the snap. He drops back. Looks like a screen pass to Deloya who passing drops it. Pass pass complete. Good coverage there by Whalen. Deloya didn't was smothered before he could even really do anything there, Don. Yeah, um, you know, Luke, Luke uh, would like to have that back. I think he would uh, he would catch that most of the time. But I'll tell you, whether he caught it or not, probably he's better off dropping that there because it would have been a loss. Um, that defensive back made a heck of a hit on him. And, uh, and, and Luke is tough just to get up and get back to the huddle. It'll make it third and long, third and nine exactly for the Hopkinton Hillers here at their own 14-yard uh, line. Kelleher breaks the huddle. He is alone in the backfield with uh, five receivers. Looks like four on the left. I don't see this formation that much. Kelleher takes a snap, looks over to his left, throwing down the right side of the field and caught. So... That was an empty backfield situation. You had the four receivers to the left. You had Brown isolated out here on, I would assume, to be um, a linebacker. Um, he, made, he ran a nice uh, quick post, and that was a great catch, great throw. Well-designed play, Big well executed down. by Hopkinton. And, the, and Brown with the catch for the first down. Gives Hopkinton a little breathing room now at their own 28. Kelleher back to pass. He pitches... To the left of Brown, who breaks one tackle, turns the corner. And he is finally forced out of bounds at what looks like the 46-yard line of Whalen. Great running by Matt Brown. Yeah, Zach Frank threw a nice block out here to spring him. Um, and then Matt kind of turned it up, had a nice stiff arm. Very, ran very well up uh, up along the sideline, showing great footwork. He was able to keep his balance and get an extra 10 out of that. Uh, at least another 10. So we had a timeout there, Jay. I mean, usually we, we try and keep uh, keep a record because it, it's hard to keep track of how many timeouts the teams get. But I'm going to say, is this Hopkinton's first? It would appear that Hopkinton has taken a timeout, which would be their first. Sorry, Whalen timeout. That was Whalen timeout. So that would be okay. Whalen's first. Whalen looks like they're catching their breath after that last play. 
So the Hopkinton coaching staff this year, you've got Jim Gerard coming back for his ninth football season. Has it been nine years already? Been nine years already. You're getting old, Jay. You don't realize <laughs> it, but you're getting old. And, uh, of course, Coach has done a great job. Uh, Dave Swanton is the associate head coach. Um, coach Swanton was actually uh, Coach Gerard's coach at Stonehill College back in the day. And you can't uh, miss uh, – I can't miss Sanborn. Sanborn's – well, Sanborn's actually up on the roof. That's right. He yeah. passed us early. He passed us early. He seems to be about seven foot five now. <laughs> Again, you're shrinking. Dan <laughs> Sullivan, offensive coordinator. Dan McLean, defensive coordinator. Mark Sandberg, special teams coordinator. We'll get to the rest in a second. Kelleher takes a snap, hands off to Frank, runs up the middle for actually a pretty nice gain there. A nice, nice push by the Hoppo line. Looks like they got about four or five on the play. We've got Brandon Anderson, defensive backs and wide receivers. Dave Hughes, head freshman coach. Is that the? Old Coach Hughes is coach of the freshman now. Okay. Did I know that? All right. I believe you did. Great. That's awesome. Uh, Will Collins, assistant freshman coach. Mike Webb, uh, head middle coach. A school coach, which is a great thing that we have uh, middle school football now. Yes. Jealous. Uh, Ed Flannery, assistant middle coach, middle school coach, and Ken Gates, assistant middle school coach. Hopkinton looks like they're in the I formation here, Don, with Kelleher in the shotgun and Brown behind him. Pitches to Brown. He's got some room on the right. He turns up field for a nice game. Nice game by Matt Brown there. Good blocking by the Hopkinton offense. Yeah, the line really has done a good job. And, again, you know, this line, uh, it, it, they're all returning. In fact, uh, I think at least four of them are for sure. And, um, you know, they're not a big group of kids, but um, they're a very good technique, very tough. And any time you've got four out of your five offensive linemen returning, you know you're going to have a good chance to play good football every night. Well, they look to be, um, they look to be turning the corner here on Wayland a little bit. Well, the, the Hillers have been able to move the ball. First and 10 now for Hopkinton at the Wayland 30. The handoff is to Brown again. He bounces to the left, breaks one tackle, and then is swallowed up after what looks like about a four or five yard gain. Yeah, uh, he didn't see anything um, right there in the middle, so he kind of hopped out and found himself a hole. And again, he, uh, Brown is kind of a downhill runner. You he know, he, he, gets his, he gets his momentum going, and, uh, and he, he falls forward every time. Hopkinton second and five at the Whalen 25 with about eight and a half minutes left here in the first half. Kelleher back along with Brown. Kelleher takes a snap, drops back, looking to throw. Nice job on the Has line. Has a lot of time. Throws over the middle again to Deloya and just out of the reach of Luke Deloya. Looked like there was some late pressure on Kelleher there by Whalen Don to just force him to throw that ball a little high. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, you got, he's had plenty of time to throw there. And, they, you know, I even commented during the play about the O-line. They kind of stood everybody up there. Um, and they – Ryan had plenty of time. Luke was covered on that play. Um, it was a tough pass. It, it was kind of a, a flutter as it was. But that would have been a tough pass to complete anyway. It'll make it third and five for Hopkinton at the wheel of 25. Matt Brown comes out of the game briefly. Looks like Brown is being replaced by number five. I'm sorry. No, five's Kelleher. Five's Kelleher. Yeah. Looks like Zach Frank in there, but I saw. I thought I saw another back in there, Don reporting. In I, for Brown. Uh, I don't know. Again, I, I, I don't know. Did I tell you I didn't have my glasses tonight, Jay? You did mention so that. So I can, I, can sh I can shake all that off. <laughs> every, time, every time people say, I don't know what that guy's looking at. What's he saying? I'll just say, I didn't have my glasses on. It's okay. have to say, Don, Wayland, uh, the Wayland fan section, Wayland is not very well <laughs> represented tonight no kidding. from the fans. I was actually looking at that. I think I see a dozen people over there. I was looking at sad. that, and I was going to say, and I'm thinking, well, maybe they were just sitting on this side, you know, and they don't. But they've been here before. They know. Like, it's not like this is their first time. They know where to, they should be sitting. So, I don't know. Sometimes you'll see that with Dover Sherborne. They don't really travel that well. You know, they like to go out to dinner on Friday nights and whatnot. But uh, that is that is not a good uh, Good crowd over on the other Sparse. side. Sparse. On the other hand, on this side, if you look around, we've got the Hiller Grillers out back. Packed as kids, always. Kids playing on back here on field two. 
Stands are packed. Beautiful Kelleher, night in Kelleher in to take the snap under center. Brown and Frank in the backfield. Kelleher snaps it. Hand this time to Frank, who cuts it upfield. Oh, Zach nice. Brown. Zach, Zach Frank with a big gain. Looks like inside the 10-yard line. That'll make it first and goal for Hopkinson. Nice running there by Zach Brown. Zach Frank. Sorry, Zach Frank. Uh, yeah, Zach, Zach Frank, uh, he played a little bit last year. Um, he would come in and and uh, kind of relieve Connor Hebert a little bit. Um, and so, you know, I, you kind of thought he was going to be the running back, but the, the, the Brown kid... I guess, I don't know, who knows? I don't know what's going on behind the scenes and well, what they're practicing. But Brown obviously is is good and deserves to be the starter, but those, they got two kids that can run the ball. Looks that way. Yeah. Frank and Frank and Brown again in the backfield. Kelleher takes it this time to Brown, who goes straight up the it's middle and in for a touchdown. Matt Brown with a nine-yard touchdown run for the first score of the game. That'll make it 6-0 Hopkinson. That was a great job by the offensive line there. Like the, the offensive line starting to set the tone a little bit. Absolutely. They both they were both the guard and the center both turned their guys perfectly. Matt Brown just found the found the seam and ran it right in for a Hiller touchdown. By the way, Don, Zach Frank is a Division I lacrosse um, commit to Sacred Heart University, so you know he's a great athlete. He's got good feet. You can see he can run. This is Noah. This is um, who's the kicker? Robbie. Oh yeah, Pagliuca. He who's who's a very good kicker. Had a really good year last year. Snap is down and the kick is up and good. Kelleher with the hold. Kelleher with the hold. And you got Ben Powers is the uh, long snapper. Pagliuca, the kicker, who in his spare time volunteers to coordinate the town flag football league. Done. Oh, is is he the coordinator? Well, that's he is. great in the. The town flag football uh, program is, it, you know, it, it's important and it's and it's big and it's, um, you know, the the day and age that we're in. And it is the future of youth football, Don. And Hopkinton and uh, all around, it is uh, it is the truth. We're starting later and later, and I'll just sound like a dinosaur if I sit here and argue uh, <laughs> against it. You so can argue, Don, but no one will listen. <laughs> Nobody's listen. Nobody will listen. <laughs> You know, I mean, again, it's, uh, you know, it's pillow fights at seven and eight years old when they put on the pads. They're not going to get hurt, but what am I? Who's listening to me? Nobody. Kelly set to kick off of the Hillers. Looks like Pagliuca does the field goal kicking, and Kelly kicks off. Yeah, Kelly also punt. I assume he, Hopkins hasn't punted yet, but uh, Kelly punted last year for them effectively, very effectively. And uh, he also, I think he kicked off last year, didn't he? He must have. Must have. But he was a TVL, he was a TVL uh, all, all, uh, all conference punter last year. Kelly kicks off a nice strong kick, taking Whalen back to their 10 yard line. Whalen re returner breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, forced out wide, and finally goes down at, at the Whalen 35 yard line. Nice running by uh, number seven for Whalen. Yeah, you got to watch Lampert. him. You got to watch him. Uh, Scanlon came down, didn't didn't break down. Uh, and missed the tackle, but he kind of stayed with it and then ended up getting in on the tackle. Um, but you're going to have to watch that kick because he can clearly move. Yep. Shifty runner. Whalen will take over on their own 35-yard line with 7 minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the first half. Now we'll see. The last time Whalen had the football, they uh, they kind of drove it down on the Hillers, and it wasn't for a fumble down here that uh, that the Hillers were able to stop him, so we'll see what can happen here. We're about three quarters way through this first half, Don, and Whalen is only starting their second drive. Wow, that's, uh, that's time of possession right there for the Hillers. Whalen set to go. Quarterback Mason Bolivar in the backfield with Big 21 Pereira. Bolivar takes it, keeps the snap, goes to his right, pulls his way forward for it looks like about five, maybe six yards. Yeah, you got Tyler Doherty in pursuit there. Ben Powers is holding his position. Um, number 20, who, who seems to be pretty active, Scanlon. Um, you got number nine, Kieran Herr in on the play. Kieran Herr looks like he's playing cornerback or outside linebacker. 
I would say cornerback. I think number 20 is the outside linebacker. Bolivar set to take the snap. Seems like something Whalen likes to do, Don, is set to take the snap, try and get Hopkinton on a hard count, and then go back. Yeah, they look over to the sidelines for an audible type of deal. Bolivar with the snap. Hands it to Pereira, who was brought down, but still manages. He was hit in the backfield, Don, and he still got three yards on that play. Yeah, that was Ben Powers again um, that came down the line and made a nice uh, nice tackle, but you're right. And that's what good running backs do, Jay. They, they, they fall forward, they're hard to bring down, and they're always getting positive yardage. That'll make a third and one for Wayland. Again, Bolivar, who looks about ready to snap the ball, then looks over to the sideline, resets. Hands it to Pereira, who is hit, but still manages to get another couple of yards for what looks like a Whalen first down. Yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna be tough in short yardage, Don. Yeah, the Whalen offensive line did a nice job. Looks like they doubled at the point of attack, and, um, and Pierre was, uh, got that first down easily here. First and 10 for Whalen at their own 47. Bolivar Pereira back to uh, in the backfield. Four wide out split, on each, two on each side. Pereira takes a snap. Sorry, Bolivar takes a snap with a, a pretty straightforward handoff to Pereira for what looks like a gain of about five or six again. Yeah, they... Um they're a physical group. You got 75 in there in the middle. You got 54, the right tackle, uh, the right guard. I mean, they fire off. So this is going to be, this is not going to be an easy test for the Hopkins the defense here. Second and six for Wayland. Bolivar back to take the snap. Ooh, ball, that ball, ball. Loose ball. Looks like Wayland fell on it, but a big loss. On a bad snap by the Whalen offense. Yeah, that, that, that thing sailed the quarterback. It just, he was lucky to get his fingertips on it. He looked like he reacted a little slow. He did. Uh, number 12. I don't think he could find the ball. I think that's what it was. He, he tipped it, then he kind of turned around. I don't think he could find the ball. Powers or um, Whalen in the no huddle, Don. Bolivar back to take the snap. Kelly almost had it in there, but uh, the quarterback recovered, and now it's put him in a third and real long. Third and 15 for Wayland. Bolivar back to throw. Throws it down the field. Has a receiver open. And a nice play. Just tipped at the last minute by Matt Brown, I believe. Safety for Hopkinson. Yeah. Just able to get his fingertips on that ball would, and stop, which almost looked like to be a short touchdown. Well, you got to watch that because that was a nice ball. And um, he was behind uh, Brian Brown. So um, he, uh, Ryan made a nice recovery to make the tip, but that's, that's a tough way to live. Uh, you, you, know, you don't want to let guys get behind you and have to recover and, and dive and tip the ball at the last minute. Wayland back to punt it. Not if you want your coaches to. Not sure who that is returning for Hopkinton, Don. Nice Luke kick. Deloya. Nice kick by Wayland. Deloya takes it on the run with some momentum, takes it down the right side and out of bounds at about midfield. Okay, that was a nice return by Luke. That was a nice punt, and Luke fielded it cleanly, took it up here on the left side. He was able to field it while running, Don, which is a huge, a huge momentum, and he was able to just get that ball and streak straight toward the left sideline, yeah. turn the corner for what looked like about a 25-yard return. You know, when you're talking a game like this that, you know, over the years normally comes down to a touchdown, you have uh, – it's, it's, it's plays like that. It's special teams plays that sometimes is the difference. Hopkinson set to take over at the Wayland 48. It'll be first and 10. Kelleher in the backfield with Brown. Pitch to Brown. Turns it up field. Breaks a tackle. Breaks two tackles for what looks like about a nine-yard gain. Again, good hard running by Brown and good blocking by the Hillers up front. Yeah, the Hillers are definitely holding the line of scrimmage here. Um, you know, they're in control here. You got three minutes, 42 seconds. So you've got your whole playbook. You can run. You can pass. You don't want to give the ball back to Wayland, But uh, certainly you could take your time here. You got plenty of time to try and go up 14-0 at halftime. Second and three for the Hillers at the Wayland 41. What do you think, Don? Does, does, does Kelleher take a shot here? Second and short. 
Uh, well, Coach Sullivan likes to take chances. You got uh, you got Deloy out here one on one, so I, I wouldn't. Be, oh, no, that's not Deloy. Who's out here one on one? It's like is it Salyards. No, it's Cole Salyards. Kelleher rolls left, keeps it. No, that was Deloy. Oh, sorry, Luke Deloy. On what an inside handoff. Gains about two. That'll make it third and very short for the Hillers. Again, what you would think would be two down territory, which makes you think, you know, you can certainly run the ball here. You've got at least four timeouts left, you would figure. And it looks like Coach Jarrett just took one. Timeout from, for Hopkinton. Jim Gerard wants to let them maybe get a breather and catch their breath and have one last push here. Yeah, and this offense, you know, I mean, they've uh, throughout the years, and Coach Sullivan has been here the whole time with Coach Gerard, and for the most part, they've always run a spread type of offense. Um, they've always been, you know, a, 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 a high scoring offense. Certainly last year, I think they averaged over 30 points a game. Um, so, you know, just being held here to seven points, although they have moved the ball. It's pretty impressive on Whalen's part. So if they can get a score here and go up 14 nothing, that'll be big going in halftime. Speak of the devil, Bill Pellucci is here to see his daughter lead the Hopkins and cheerleaders. Okay. That's interesting. Here we go. Whalen defense comes back onto the field. Hopkinton ready to go. Third and two at the Whalen 40 yard line. Kelleher back, which looks like Frank and Brown. Kelleher back to throw. He's got a receiver over the middle. That's Brown. It's Frank. <laughs> Sorry, Zach Frank. Yeah, that was, that was a little play action. That was a little play action pass. Uh, he kind of faked it to Frank, and then he just kind of settled right in the middle, right behind the uh, middle linebacker there. And uh, Ryan threw a dart to him. And uh, the Hillers are back on the move here uh, at the 21-yard line. Kelleher starting to get his timing. Zach Frank is number 21, and Matt Brown is number 24. They, they clearly don't. They clearly don't have security at the gate with some <laughs> of the people they see walking into this stadium. Kelleher takes a snap, pitches it to Brown. Goes to his right, cuts it back upfield. Nice Matt game Brown. by Matt Brown. Lucas Moynihan, number 56, looked like he had a nice kick out block there. And, uh, and Brown just kind of read that and cut back up off of his, uh, his butt there for another six-yard gain. Again, good hard running by Matt Brown. Brown's got Seems a, to like that right side. He's, uh, he's up over 50, 60 yards right now easily. Easily. Hopkinton breaks the huddle. Again, Kelleher in the back with Zach Frank and Matt Brown. Kelleher with the handoff to Brown, who cuts to the outside right, breaks a tackle. Found a little seam there, Don, for it looks like the first down. It'll be That's first and goal. First yeah, the, the, the Hopkinton blockers, and whether it's the offensive line or the, or the lead running back, uh, they're sticking to their blocks. You don't see any of the... The Whalen defenders, you know, getting any penetration here. Looks like they're doing a good job on that middle linebacker, Pereira. Well, we have, we've called his name early, but he's since been neutralized. And, and you know, I think we kind of ran it up in the A-gap a couple times, but mostly we've been going over the, uh, the B and the C-gaps. First and goal for Hopkinton. Kelleher back to take the snap with Frank and Brown at backs. Kelleher pitches it to Brown left. He bounces it out. He, he is down close to the goal line. And he may have gone down there. That was nice hard running, though. Matt Brown stretching that play out as much as he could and gotten as much as he could. Looks like he's inside the one. I'm yeah. Sorry, looks like the two-yard line. Yeah, his knee went down. That was, it was a nice, you know, he didn't want to go out of bounds, so he stopped and then made a nice cutback, kind of lost his balance, and his, and his knee went down. But that was a nice effort by Matt. I, I mean, I don't know. Second and two, I'd reward the kid right now. Let him have it again. Sure. Hopkinton looking to go in here for the second time in the first half. 20 seconds on the clock. Looks like they got time for at least two more plays. Kelleher under center. He gives it. Okay, you want to call timeout here. 
That is Matt Brown stopped at the line of scrimmage for what looked like a loss. It's Hopkinton calls a Hopkinton with 11 seconds left in the half. That's a big stop right there for Whalen. You know, they kind of went right into the teeth of the defense right there um, on, on third, second and two uh, for a touchdown, and Whalen was up for the task. That big, stout interior line for Whalen making the play. Mary, Mary, Mary Pellucci's here signing autographs um, <laughs> for the cheerleadings, cheerleaders. Cheerleaders are always well represented by their fans. So a one-yard loss of that play down will make it third and three for Hopkinton. It looks like they have time if, if they want to throw the ball, especially to get two plays in, which I'm sure they'll try. Well, you know, now now's a situation. Now's a situation where you um, – you may want to take the field goal here. You know, if you don't get this on third and three, you don't want to go in without any, without scoring any points. Hopkinton set to uh, snap the ball here, Don, as they walk up to the line of scrimmage. Ryan Kelleher in the shotgun with Matt Brown to his right. Kelleher takes a snap, rolls to his right. He's looking to throw. He's got some. That pass is caught by Luke DeLoya in the end zone for a Hopkinton touchdown. Yeah, that's um, that's a huge play right there. Hopkinton is going to go into the locker room with at least a 13-point lead. You know, um, Ryan kind of took that ball, uh, ran right, and um, Whalen had it well covered. He kind of stopped, looked back, threw back against his body, which a lot of times is not ideal. Threw it high in a situation where nobody else could get it but DeLoya, who's not a tall kid, but can seriously, you know, obviously get up. And he made a heck of a catch for the Hiller touchdown. Great catch and throw by the Hopkinton offense, who are setting out to kick the extra point, Pagluka. Snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. That'll make it 14 nothing Hiller. We'll probably do a quick squib kick here, and then we'll go into the locker room for halftime. Yeah, that's a big, uh, that's a big turn of events right there. Uh, Hopkinton, uh, you know, stops, stops Whalen, takes the ball down, and again, they have not really been stopped. They stopped themselves on that first drive. They fumbled the on end. their first drive, and then a bad snap on their second drive, which really cost them field position and, and took all the, all the momentum out of their drive. And Hopkinton, to their credit, took advantage of both those turnovers. Yeah, th they have. Th Whalen has not has not slowed him down at all. So, um, you know, right now you couldn't ask for a better start. I know Coach Gerard's happy about it, and uh, just want to get out of this half here. You're right. They would. I would think they would squib it. Um, you don't want to give this kid. He looked like he could return the ball, any chance, and uh, and they get to the half with, with two touchdown lead. Hopkinton, Hopkinton kickoff team set to line up. Kelly, um, Kelly's going to kick it off again. Number seven, Michael Lampert, back there to receive for Whalen. Looks like he want to keep the ball out of his hands if possible. Kelly kicks it off a little, like a pooch kick. Coming that's, out of bounds. That's going to go out of bounds. Whalen will take over, what, at their 40? Yeah, that's not ideal either. So you're giving them the ball at the 40-yard line. You know, you're giving them five seconds here. They're, they have enough time, certainly, to to throw a bomb. Um, it's unlike the NFL where it, it's not a spot file. So, you know, if you do get beat here as a high school kid, and I know the coaches do this, you got to tell them just tackle the guy. It's only a 15-yard penalty. Hillers will have their all-hands team in here, Don, and they're – on their defensive set. I see Deloya way back. Yeah, Deloya's back there. Uh, Brown and... Uh, Harley. 22, Brian Harley. You got, yeah, Kieran Hur. Kieran Hur. He's number nine. He's a Scanlon. cornerback. Scanlon's a linebacker. You got 25. Levy. Levy's in there. Brennan Levy. Kelly's in there. Saparocious. Saparocious, 34. And then now we've already talked about the line. You've got uh, Tyler Doherty at nose, Ben Powers at uh, tackle. 
and uh, Theo Cavello going both ways uh, and playing left tackle. Pillars call a timeout. Coach Gerard wants to think it over a little bit. Well, he must have saw something. Maybe it was a formation that they haven't seen, and if you've got timeouts, you might as well use them. The last thing you want to be doing is uh, – You can't take them with you. You can't take them, can't take them with you. I, you know, you, you got – you know – you know, Terosian's got things to do tonight, so, you know, he likes to keep these games moving. But he doesn't like all these timeouts. But uh, other than that, you got to so do what's good. Yeah, please, uh, at halftime, uh, our YouTube uh, followers, please stay tuned. You're going to have, uh, you're going to be entertained by the band and also the uh, Hopkinton cheerleaders, coached by Ashley Pellucci. Here we go for what appears to be the final play of the half. Wayland at their own 30-yard line. I'm sure you're going to see some sort of a heave down the field here by Bolivar. Wayland snaps the ball. Bolivar back, rolls to his right. Looks like he's going to keep it. Ooh. And uh, Bolivar lowers the shoulder and ends the half with a thud. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, that's an interesting call right there. I mean... You're down two touchdowns and you just have your quarterback run a, <laughs> run a sweep and get pounded? I don't know. Well, that'll do it that for the first half. Score here at David Hughes Field, 14-0 Hillers. Again, please stay, uh, YouTube followers, please stay tuned and be entertained by the Hopkinton Hiller band and, and cheerleaders. And we'll see you in the next half. Welcome back, Hillers fans. Uh, Hopkinton gets set to play the second half here against Wayland at Dave Hughes Stadium. Hopkinton leads Wayland 14 and nothing after two impressive drives by the Hiller offense uh, and a couple of key turnovers, or one key turnover by the Wayland offense. So Hopkinton looks to kick off here in the second half. Wayland will get a chance to uh, get something going on offense. And Don, any thoughts on the first half and going into the second half, things you look to see? I, I would just like to keep it going the way they're, the way they're, the way they're going here. Um, the Hillers have controlled the ball offensively. Their offensive line has done a great job. They've had three long drives. First one ended on downs, and they scored two more touchdowns. So offensively, there's really nothing else you need to be doing. 
Uh, defensively, uh, you have to continue to control number 21 and not let Whalen's receivers get behind you here. And uh, this is a big drive to start the game. If, if Whalen comes comes down here and scores, you got a whole new ball game. So let's see how it plays out. Kelly to kick for the Hillers, and he boots it down the right down the middle to about the 15. Return by Whalen. He is stopped at the 21. Swarmed on by the Hopkinson kickoff team. Yeah, that was a nice job there. Tyler Doherty was the first one to kind of wrap him up, and Kieran Hur came in and smacked him at the end to end the play. And uh, they've uh, kind of pinned Whalen back here on the 25-yard line. Yeah, uh, Doherty was a good special teams player last year, Don. He seems to always have his, uh, his hat in the mix on those special team tackles. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got a nose for the ball. That's why they got him at nose guard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Whalen set to take over here at their own 25. Got Bolivar quarterback and Pereira, the running back, back. Whalen with their usual look over to the sideline. They're set. Ball is snapped. Bolivar rolls to his right, looking to throw. He heaves it downfield. And that catch is looked like caught, and there's a flag on the play, maybe interference on number nine. Uh, 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 Kieran Hurry. Kieran Hurry, he, and he had coverage on that, but I thought it might have been push off on offense. But uh, it looks, I mean, that was good coverage. Uh, it's hard to see whether whose hands was on who there, but um, that's a big play for, for Whalen. Yeah, either way, first down for Whalen, but it looks like a 15-yard uh, gain. More than that, actually, they're up there past midfield, so they must have just declined the penalty and taken the call. Oh, yeah, for sure. That was over 15 yards. Again, Bolivar back to take the snap. He gets it, hands it to Pereira, who busts it right up the middle. Looks like about a five-yard gain and a nice tackle there by, by Kieran Hur. Big hit by that. Looked like that was going to be a big game by Whalen, and number nine, Hur stepped in there to make a big tackle. Came in from his cornerback spot uh, to, make a nice, uh, to make a nice stop. He almost is playing kind of a rover position. Whalen with the no huddle. Again, the handoff to Pereira, who rolls out to the right. Looks like he may have gotten just enough for a first down. Again, brought down by her. It's going to be close. Yeah, Kieran's doing a nice job staying low. On running backs like that, you just have to stay low. You have to tackle their, their knees, tackle their thighs. And, uh, and stay under control. He did a nice job on all three aspects there. And stopped them short of the first down. That'll be third, what looks like about a half a yard for Whalen at the Hopkinton 41 yard line. Bolivar back to take the snap. He takes it, hands it to Pereira, who takes it up the middle for about three or four yards and a Whalen first down. You know, again, Whalen, um, got a, when you have a good running back, a good quarterback, and it looks like a pretty large offensive line, you know they're going to move the ball, and that's exactly what they're doing here. Whalen's starting to gain some momentum here in this drive. First and down at the Hopkinton 34. Bolivar back, takes the snap, again hands to Pereira, who is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Someone got in there early down in the backfield. Looked like... Um, I, it could have been DeLoya getting low there. Yeah, might have been Matt, looked like Matt Brown actually yeah, Matt got in Brown, the backfield. And yeah. Got a piece of him and then the... Oh, Saparochas too, Zary. Saparochas is a, uh, a linebacker. He had his hat in there. And one thing that this Hiller team did last year is very... Their defense, they had 11 guys to the ball all the time. And it looks like that's the same kind Bolivar of... Bolivar back uh, to throw, rolling right. He keeps it, tucks it, and runs. Flag on the play. Looks like about a five or six yard gain. But let's see what the flag is. It looks like it could be a hold against Wayland. Yeah, they're walking back. Good play by the Wayland quarterback there, Bolivar, to avoid that tackle and get something out of that play. But again, all for not is it looks like a hold against Wayland. Again, Don, another Wayland drive stalled. We're already had, you know, it's 8:49. This is this game is going is going quick. Second down and 12 for Whalen at the Hopkinton 33-yard line. Bolivar and Pereira back. Whalen set. Bolivar takes the snap. He hands it to Pereira, who goes right up the middle 
A little bit of a hole there for him. It looks like he picked up about seven or eight. That looks like that look what like, like it's going to be the bread and butter for Wayland all night on. Well, you know, when you're trailing by two touchdowns, you're going to have to figure out something else to do um, other than uh, other than run the ball. Third and long for Wayland, third and six to be exact. As Bolivar again looks over to the sideline. Big play here for the Hopkinton defense. Boulevard back, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. He's going to keep it and not get much as Hopkinton had that red. Yeah, the defensive backfield did a nice job. Um, number 26, uh, Tyler Doherty had some – was that Levy or was that Doherty? Looked like Levy who forced him out of bounds there. Okay, well, uh, they did a nice job in the defensive backfield, had everybody covered, didn't have any options to throw the ball, and he just kind of ran out. It'll so. be fourth and nine for Whalen at the Hopkinton 33-yard line. I suppose this is four-down territory. Uh, again, in a quick-moving game, you're already 743. There's only 743 left in the third quarter. Um, he could pooch punt it and put him, pin him deep. But Bolivar back. Looks over to the sideline. This doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand why they do that. Bolivar back, a Hopkinton blitz. Bolivar with a nice throw in there. Looks complete. That'll be a Whalen first down. I'm not sure who caught that for Whalen. Looks like maybe number four. I don't know, Tyler Doherty looked like he had a little bit of pressure coming up the middle there, but um, number 11 stood in there and delivered a nice strike on a curl um, for a big first down for Whalen. That'll be first and ten for Whalen at the Hopkinton 22-yard line. Seven, seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. <coughs> Bolivar back with Pereira. Bolivar takes a snap, hands it to Pereira, who is oh, the good fake by the quarterback it's Bolivar, Bolivar who keeps it. He faked me out, Don. Yeah, yeah, I was watching the tackle myself, and then luckily Brendan Kelly was watching the ball, and he made the. Uh, he made the tackle there. Uh, you know, number 11, he can throw the ball and run. He's a dual threat. Yeah. That's a big gain for Whalen. Looks like about a nine-yard gain there, eight-yard gain. He's second and two for Whalen at the Hopkins at 14-yard line. Bolivar back, takes the snap, hands it to Pereira this time, who breaks it to the left and picks up what looked like looks like to be a Whalen first down. Like Kelly again on the tackle. You know, this spot here uh, of the field, this plays right into Whalen's strength. They like to kind of pound the ball a little bit. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't surprise, be surprised here to see them hand the ball off four times in a row. Big, number 55, big Kyle Stuckel in there to give Doherty a spell at nose. He's a big boy. Good to see Kyle in there on defense. Well, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I mean, if you remember his older brother, he's a big boy. So I got to take a look and see how big this kid is. Hand off to Pereira. Oh, yeah, Wayland. that's a Sokol, number 55. I not, can spot not him Sokol, from here. It's that, Don, it's Stuckel. Oh, Stuckel. Stuckel. Okay. Yeah. yeah St well, Stuckel is a um, – he's a starter on the uh, on the offensive line. Yeah, they put him in. Looks like they put him in for a couple snaps. Maybe okay. On defense to give Darty a spell. Second and nine for Wayland at the Hopkinton nine-yard line. Hand off to Pereira, and he is stuffed again. As it looks like Big Cole Stuckel, Kyle Stuckel in there with the stop. Good defensive substitution by Hopkinton. Oh, you're Stuckel, down. Yeah. Stuckel making a play right away. Well, you, you know that uh, you know they're going to be pounding the ball here. Like I said, it's third and eight, and the Hiller defense has stood up here. Third and eight for Wayland. Again, which most likely is four down territory. Bolivar back to take the snap. He takes it, rolls to his left. He's looking to throw. He throws it to the corner of the end, towards the end zone, but that is short. Looks like he stopped at the five-yard line. Yeah, he caught the ball. Number six, six Michael German. Looks like he could have been bobbling it there. That's what the Hopkinton players are saying. You got uh, Saparochis and Deloya over there arguing that he didn't have control, but they gave him the catch. And uh, Looks like they line. got it down towards the two-yard line. They're saying, they're saying six, yard line? six but okay. it's closer than that. Pretty short game then by Wayland, and they're going to take a timeout and think this over and design a play. Probably the biggest 
play of the night so far for Wayland. Don. Yeah, if they, if they score here, they're in the game. If they don't, um, then it's, it's, it's going to be a real uphill battle. We got Scotty Mackin just Coach joined Scotty us up Macklin in the, in the uh, in the booth. Guys, M and M's going. Scotty Mack reminding us all that the doghouse is open and there's M and M's there. What's up, buddy? Always good to see Coach Scotty up here. I like the oh, hat. Also a camp counselor for us in the summertime. Scotty, great with the little kids, of course. Scotty's great with everybody. He sure is. Okay, this is the big fourth down play here. Fourth and goal for Wayland. You sharing, you get to share your M&M, &M, Scotty? Fourth and six for Wayland. Fourth and goal. Here we go. Bolivar back with Pereira. Hopkinson defense digs in. Bolivar back to take the snap. He takes it. He rolls to his right looking to throw. Throws it across the grain, and that pass is broken up by what lo looks like Luke DeLoya. Nah, Luke was there, but his Saparochas came over and tapped it at the end. I, I think Luke could have even have intercepted that if Saparochas didn't hit that away. Um, that was a trick play. Ran, you know, rolled right, and then threw back to his left, but Hopkinton was ready for it and had it covered. Not fooled at all. And again, Saparochas and DeLoya both in on that play. Hopkinton will take over on downs at their own six-yard line. And Don, that's got to be a crushing, uh, crushing defeat there for for Whalen, the Whalen offense. Yeah, uh, that that's very tough for Wayland. Um, now the only thing that they need to do here is uh, they can somehow pin the Hillers. But uh, Hillers put together a couple first downs, and I'm going to say this game's well on its way. Keller hands to Brown, who breaks a tackle. And off that Brown up the middle, up the middle for a big gain. Looks like 10 or 11 yards. I would suspect that you're going to see a, a good bit of Matt Brown here with a two touchdown lead, and he's the type of he's the type of runner that the the defense gets sick of tackling after a while. Yeah, he runs hard with high yeah. knees. Yeah, they're not going to want to. You can see, you're going to see more and more arm tackles as the game goes. Here we go, Hopkinton first and ten at their own twenty. Kelleher back with Brown. Keller takes a snap again, hands to Brown. This time stopped behind the line of scrimmage for what looks like a loss. Wayland looked like they were kind of stacking the line there. They know what the Hillers are trying to do here as far as uh, pound the ball a little bit, and they, uh, they were certainly ready for it. Had penetration right off the bat. That'll make it looks like second and 11 for the Hiller offense. Under four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Kelleher in the shotgun with Brown to his right. Kelleher takes that pitches to Brown. Wayland defense. Looked like they were there to make the play, but... But Brown was able to get a little bit out of that as he cut back to his left. Yeah, he he, uh, he did a nice job there. Uh, Zach Frank was throwing a nice block out in front, kind of neutralized that defensive end, and then uh, Matt made a cut back. But there was good good pursuit by the Whalen defense. There was really nothing there for Matt to, to do. I'll make it third and five for Hopkinton at their own 25. Three minutes here in the third quarter. Kelleher back with Zach Frank and Matt Brown. Kelleher takes a snap. He drops back to throw. He throws over the middle, and that ball is caught. Luke DeLoya with what looks like about a 10-yard gain. That was a nice that was a nice pattern Luke ran there. Um, Kelleher took quite a shot on that pass, Don. Yeah, he did. Uh, you know, he had time. The offensive line did a nice job. They gave him the time, and he held on to it, gave uh, Luke the opportunity to kind of break open there. And, uh, and he stood in there, threw the ball, and did take a nice hit and uh, shook it off. He's bouncing back and looks like he's getting the play here from Coach Sully on the sideline. It'll be first and 10 at their own 36 as the clock continues to tick down in this third quarter. Kelleher again in the back with Zach Frank and Matt Brown with Luke DeLoya split wide. Kelleher takes the ball, hands to Zach Frank. 
Not much there. Looks like maybe one or two yards. That'll make it second and it looks like seven or eight yards for Hopkinton. Yeah, Whalen Second defense, their, their defensive line is playing tough. They're difficult to move. Um, yards are coming a little bit harder here in this second half. But, you know, with this drive started down inside the 10-yard line, and they're already out to the 40. So, Hopkinton's stringing some plays together here. Here we go. Kelleher back there with again with Frank and Brown. Kelleher takes a snap. He hands the ball to Matt Brown, who breaks it. Tries to cut it back up the middle, but he is stuffed immediately by that big Whalen line led by number 75, Brooks Jones. Yeah, Jones, um, looks like we had two guys pulling for Hopkinton, the uh, backside guard and tackle. Um, Whalen, they, we didn't get any push off the line, and they, they again, they controlled that play. Put the Hillers in a third down situation here. It's like here. Drew Saperosius in for Matt Brown. Maybe give Matt Brown a spell. Third and six for Hopkinton. Kelleher back with Frank and Saperosius. Kelly and DeLoya wide on the right to receive. Kelleher takes a snap. He drops back. He's got plenty of time. Throws it over the middle again to DeLoya, oh, yeah. who breaks a tackle. Takes it down the left side. He's going in, it looks like. Luke DeLoya, still Luke DeLoya takes it in for the touchdown. Breaking Luke. a tackle at about midfield, take it down the across the field to on the left side and not untouched for the for the Hiller for the Hiller touchdown. That was um, that was again great great um, great protection by the offensive line. Keller was able to sit back in the pocket, let Luke run his post. Luke made a nice cut inside the safety, um, got in front of the kid. Kelleher threw a bullet again. And uh, Luke did a nice job catching the ball with his hands and then turning on the Jets to a, take it into the end zone. A great throw there, Don. Luke didn't have to break stride. Caught the ball, made one cut, made a guy miss, and then it was off to the races. Great play by the Hiller offense. Pagluka, Ooh. it's a kick. That kick is blocked. Scooped up. Scooped up by Wayland. Yeah, you know, that snap was a little bit high, but there was really it was penetration right up the middle yeah. there. That, that had no chance to 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 get off. Twenty to nothing, Hopkinton. As we wind down the third quarter, looks like we got time for a kickoff and a play. But again, you know, I mean, the Hopkinton offense—it doesn't look like they've missed a beat. They they lost a lot of kids off this team last year. Oh, they year. they lost the, the Metro West Daily News Male Athlete of the Year. Yep, we had Will Abbott. Abbott. Will the Thrill is. Uh, is gone he's, and he's uh, scoring goals for the Quinnipiac lacrosse team now. Yeah, but they have, uh, and, you know, I mean, that was a big senior class last year, and there was a lot of offense to replace. And again, that's the key to high school football is always to have a, a strong senior class. Looks like the Hillers are are lucky enough to have one again this year. And uh, and again, you know, you're seeing names here that we're calling out that we didn't even mention last year, Jay. And here you got kids coming up and making plays. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see a lot of Kelleher to Deloya this season, Don, and a lot of hard running by Matt Brown. Yeah, well, that's a good combination. I mean, you know that Deloya is uh, hes a smart, heads-up kid, uh, tough football player. So, you know, you know he's going to be making plays on both sides of the ball. Um, and I'm really happy to what I'm seeing out of Brown running the ball. So, yeah, the offense should be strong. Here we go. Kelly set to kick off. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, as a reminder, you know, uh, here in the third quarter, we are, for the first time ever, live on YouTube. So please retweet us. Tell us about it. Kelly kicks off. Taken at the 10-yard line by Wayland. He breaks a tackle, the Wayland runner. From here. Looks like Tommy Hamlet in there on the special teams tackle. Nice play by Hamlet. So every Friday. Every Friday night, um, if, you're, if you're not able to make it to the Hiller football game here at Dave Hughes Stadium or at, uh, as an away game, YouTube will be, um, we're going to be live on YouTube. Uh, the away games that we do cover, yes. If we are covering them, yes. Wayland set to take uh, over here. Follow HCAM on YouTube. Up to 46. 
Oh, Bolivar twice is that right? Take the snap. Didn't we stream last year on Facebook, Mike? We on uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving with the help from Ashland. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which we play Ashland here uh, twice. Yeah, we play him twice this year, which is kind of strange. Yep. Bolivar takes it, rolls to his left, and he is stacked up there by Deloya holding his edge. That play went nowhere, and you're starting to see, you're starting to see the Hopkinton defense on establish themselves and really set the tone here in the second half. Yeah, there was. Um, yeah, I mean Luke, Luke held the edge there from his cornerback spot, made a nice open field tackle. That'll do it for the third quarter. Don, we talked about special teams. And, you know, you see kids on this team who are juniors who are they're going to have a hard time cracking the starting lineup, obviously, this year. But to see a kid like number eight, Tommy Hamlet, make a big tackle on special teams, probably saved about 20 or 25 yards by making that play. Oh, I'm sure that there's kids here that are standing on the sidelines and they may be banged up or injured or, or just not there yet, you know. Um, I mean, Coach Gerard knows when kids are ready. You know, there are a lot of, you know, high school football, you've got 18-year-old kids, but you've also got some sophomores in there that are 15, 16, that just haven't, you know, there's a big discrepancy in size and mentality. And sometimes it takes some kids a little longer to, to develop, both mentally and physically. And, and this is a deep and talented senior class for the Hiller, so a lot of the juniors, are, they're just going to have to wait their they turn. They have to wait their turn, the same way a lot of these seniors here uh, that are playing this year waited their turn last year. Here we go. Hopkinton ready to go back out there on defense. You can see a little spring in the step on the Hopkinton defense, Don. I noticed uh, Saperosha's 34. He's fired up. Oh, heck yeah. You got a 20 nothing lead. You can pin your ears back and go after him here. It's Whalen's like going to have to start putting the ball in the air. Whalen again looking over to the sideline. They sort of spend a lot of time doing this stuff. I just don't understand it. It's weird. Bolivar rolls out to his right, looking to throw. Nothing there. He throws it. It's picked. Did Passes get that? incomplete at about midfield. I thought Brown had intercepted that Matt almost. Brown close to intercepting that ball. That'll be third and nine for Wayland at their own 34-yard line. Getting to be do or die time for the Whalen offense. Bolivar alone in the backfield. Waiting patiently for the play. Well, not, not to mention you're letting seconds tick off. And you're down three Bolivar touchdowns. Bolivar again rolls out to his right looking to throw. Ball. That ball is up in the air and it is actually caught by Wayland. So Whalen catches a break off the tip ball. Big yeah, that gain. was a break. Big gain. Looks like about a 20-yard gain for Whalen, and they'll take over inside Hopkins in territory. First and 10 with about 10.40 to go here in the game. Yeah, the quarterback, he rolled out. Um, he, the, the, the kid was covered. Had a, a, a Hopkinton defender tipped it, and it kind of floated up there. Number 14 grabbed it and made some positive yardage. Bolivar again back low, takes the snap, drops straight back. There was a quick pass out to the right for maybe a two or three yard gain. Caught there by number seven, Mike Lampert. Michael Lampert, who's also the, the kick returner for Wayland. Good coverage there by looked like Kieran Herr. Now they're going in the hurry up, which they have most of the game, um, even though it's not a too hurry up because they stop midway and look back over to the sidelines. Boulevard takes a snap. He's back to throw. Throws down the middle of the field. Just overthrows Lampert who had his man beat. Throws yeah. didn't have quite enough air on this. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, Scanlon. He got behind him, but Scanlon was running with him there. Would have taken a perfect pass, which uh, they weren't able to execute that. So you've got third and eight. Like Lucas Moynihan checks into the game for Hopkinton, number 56. Another big lineman for Hopkinton. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's Six, one five. of their... He's one of their uh, – holding. Bolivar back to pass. He completes it. Receiver breaks a tackle. Number six, Michael German, breaks a tackle there and gets a first down for Wayland. Uh, looks like Tyler Doherty made some nice penetration there. I thought he got held right at the end. But uh, 
They let the uh, they let the play go off, and the quarterback stood in there and completed it. And Wayland is not going away without a fight. Boulevard back. He throws it to his left, and that pass is dropped by Lampert. That was a tough. That was a tough snap. He had to field it with his left hand, put it back in his right hand, then throw it quickly out here. Lampert should have caught that. That'll make it second and ten for Whalen at the Hopkins in 34. Boulevard back to throw. He drops straight back. Moynihan in pursuit. And 25, Levy in pursuit oh, as don't Boulevard throw that flag. Just, just dumps that ball out of bounds. He got smacked there at the end by 56. 56, Moynihan. I was thinking they might. Well, you know, sometimes you, if, you, if this was the NFL, it would have been a flag. But luckily, we're watching high school football. And Moynihan and Levy both in there in that play, forcing Boulevard to just unload it out of bounds. That'll make it third and long, third and ten for Wayland. Boulevard again, the lone. He's back to throw as he gets more penetration there by the Hopkinson. Looked like number 20. Looked like Scanlon got in there. Or that's 28. To 28. Eric Davis. Eric Davis, outfielder for the Cincinnati Reds. Right. Mid-90s. And the Dodgers. <laughs> Here we go. That'll make it fourth and ten for Wayland. As uh, this is pretty much it for Wayland, Don. They got they got a score here. Yeah, they definitely got to get first down first. Bolivar again in the backfield, lone of trips right for Wayland. He takes it, goes straight back, throws towards the end zone. That pass is dropped, oh. caught, and then dropped by Lampert. Yeah, that looked like a floater to me. I, I thought that was going to be picked off, but he just kind of dropped it right in there. And uh, and number seven, Lampert, he had it in his hands, and uh, he dropped it. So um, Hawkinson will take over, over on, on downs. downs. We have seen this before, unless they call the penalty. No, it's Hawkinson's ball. Yeah, Hawkinson takes over on downs. That was a tough series for number seven. He had two big, uh, big drops there. A couple of drops there. Okay, Hopkinton takes over with just over nine minutes to play in the game. Look for a lot of Matt Brown here on this drive. Kelleher back with Brown. Kelleher takes that, pitches to Brown left. Breaks a tackle, is stretched out a little wide. It looks like he maybe picked up about two or three. Uh, some tough running. Um, Whalen strung him out there. Brought down by Cameron Jones, number one for Whalen. Safety. Did a good job staying inbounds. This is what you want to do here. You've got a three touchdown lead. You just want to keep the clock rolling. Kelleher taking plenty of time in the huddle. As you say, Don, the, time, the clock is their friend. Oh, yeah. Kelleher back with Frank and Brown. Kelleher at this time to looks like Zach Frank straight up the middle. Zach Frank grinding hard. Looks like he picked up another couple of yards. Probably make it third and five. Third yeah, and what four. he did was hold on to the ball, keep his feet moving, and uh, keep the clock running. Now he forced some Whalen to take a timeout here. Don, you, you can't help but look out of the field and you realize these high school kids, Waylon's Waylon starting to look defeated. Yeah, there's a lot of kids standing with their hands on their hips. Um, certainly uh, one or two first downs here. Um, and, then, and then I think you start getting thinking about the subs. Um, but again, things can turn quickly, especially in high school football. So, you know, you want to finish the job here, and that's exactly what the Hillers are going to try and do here on this third down. This is, this is where you really value your seniors. Especially Ryan Kelleher, who's been in this situation, which seems like a million times. Um, Ryan will protect the ball here. Looks like Matt Brown in the backfield with Ryan Kelleher. So we're down to eight minutes and 15 seconds in the game. DeLoya in motion. He takes the sweep, but it looks like Hopkinson may have jumped off sides. Yeah, I think there was movement there. 
Jet sweep there to DeLoya. Never got off the ground as the Hillers jumped. Which will now make it third and 10. 20 point leader, no, Don. You know, Coach Gerard's not happy about that. Um, nope, nope, because it's uh, the football is discipline, and you want to um, you want to carry yourself with discipline. It's one of the most important things when you play in this sport. And uh, at whatever point in the game you've got a, a movement on your offense, your coaches aren't going to be happy. Trust me. My son described Coach Gerard Don as a coach who coaches you very hard. <laughs> <laughs> He is, Coach. Uh, Co he's uh, out. The, you, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what is a testament to Coach Gerard is um, the number of kids that are still playing football. Eleven current, eleven current Hillers playing college football. Yeah. Kelleher takes the snap, drops straight back. He's going to throw it, breaks a tackle. He's got twenty-one downfield. That's a great catch. Zach Frank. Zach Frank with a great catch, a great throw on the run by Ryan Kelleher. Yeah, Ryan got out there. He was pressured. He was flushed out. Kind of threw again. He turned his body. Really, a nice throw. Wasn't a tight spiral, but man, it was right on the money. On the money, and while moving to his left, which is a tough throw. A tough throw. Big time third down conversion by the Pillars. Frank catches it. Went up and you know, kind of grabbed the ball um, because the defender. He was pretty well covered. Made a nice play. Big first down for the Hillers. Kelleher again back with Matt Brown. Keller takes a snap, hands it to Brown, who goes straight up the middle. He is stuffed there by number 21, Wellington Pereira. As the clock continues to run down. Looks like the Hillers have something here in Zach Frankton. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, it looks like they're very fortunate here. You've got Frank able to run the ball. You've got Matt Brown, um, who you're playing at safety also. And I think they just ran Saparochus in there, who did get some carries last year. Um, in junk time, number 34. So they've got three. They've got three. Um, they've got three guys that can carry the ball, and that's that's certainly huge, especially as you go through a, a, a high school football season. Kelleher set to take the snap. Matt Brown in motion. He takes the pitch to the right. It's looks like he's got some rope. Sorry, Saparocious running hard, but it looks like it might be coming back. Yeah, that's a hold. I'll tell you, keep it going here. Our YouTube followers just keep going up and up. And that's that's despite the fact that Mike Trojan put a picture of us on the website. I think that might. I thought that would terrify people. I was going to say, that's not going to help bring people. Yes, yeah, so you can watch it with the volume down. Or just, uh, you know, don't look at the pictures of the broadcast crew. If you want to enjoy your Friday night. <laughs> Second and 12 for Hopkinton at the Wayland 44-yard line. Six minutes, 46 seconds to go here in the game. Actually, it will be second and 22 after the hold. As Hopkinton is pushed back to their own 44-yard line, 46-yard line. Yeah, but Coach Gerard, uh, going back to him real quick, he's just, uh, you know, he's well thought of just really by everybody. I mean, you know, you coach – how many hundreds of football players? There's already always going to be kids that don't don't come through the program happy. But I'll tell you what, Jay, I don't really know any of them, and uh, I know the kids that have graduated. They come back, yep. get an opportunity to see the coaches. And it's quite the fraternity, Coach Sullivan. It's a, it's a, it's quite the fraternity. He's got that golf tournament going on um, in the summertime, and he's been able to pull back alumni, you know, recent alumni to play in it. Um, it's just uh, the culture that he's built here has been fantastic. Makes for fun Friday nights, that's for sure. Oh, Keller, yeah. Kelleher back, it looks like DeLoya. He takes the pitch. Nice. Great lead block there. Saperocious. By Saperocious, although Wayland is all over DeLoya. Um, looks like Hopkinton is in kill the clock mode, Don. Yeah, and that's fine, and it's good to spread those carries around because you don't want to get the same kid pounded on the whole time, especially your first game of the season. Um, but Wayland, who has played, they've played tough all, all game. They played tough on that play. And Luke didn't have anywhere to go on that, uh, that end of round. So that'll make it third and very long, 21 for Hopkinton. Just over six minutes to play here in the final quarter. Kelleher in the huddle, letting that clock tick down. It's under six minutes now. 
Uh, you know, it's tough because it's not like we're in a stadium where there is a play clock, so you've got to kind of keep it mentally, and then the ref will give the sign with his hands stretched out, meaning you've got five seconds and you've got to get going. Third down here, Kelleher and shotgun. Looks like Saporosius. Kelly in motion. Kelleher back to throw. Plenty of time. He lets it rip down the field. It is caught by Luke DeLoya, who seems to be uncoverable tonight for the Whalen defense. Every time they need a play, it goes Kelleher to DeLoya, especially on third and long. They've converted a few times now. Yeah, well, it looks like they're trying, you know, they're covering Luke, trying to cover him one on one, and he's just coming down here and making just a quick kind of. Ran a great route. Ran a great route. Plenty great of time footwork. to throw it. Kelleher. Delivers it as usual. Sitting back there, and the line did a great job, giving them, you know, four, five, six seconds. He delivered a heck of a pass, and that's a big first down. And, you know, I mean, when Hopkinton needs to throw, they throw the ball, and and, <laughs> and it works. It certainly does. It looks like DeLoya may have close to over, uh, or over 100 yards receiving by now. Uh, yeah, he's had himself a, a game. A couple of touchdowns. Yeah, I th in fact, I think his dad's hopping around. I don't think he's sat down yet. He's <laughs> hopping around on a pogo stick well, out I here. Well, I see Neil Kelleher. High Neil Kelleher is still biting his fingernails. He thinks this is a close game. <laughs> he, Neil's already worried about tomorrow. <laughs> Timeout taken by Wayland. Well, this will, this will make it a little easier if the Hillers come out of this with a, a win for Coach Gerard in the uh, in the office on Monday. It's a big win, Don. Wayland was a preseason top 20 pick by the Boston Globe. So yeah. Wayland's a good football team. And, and, and from a good conference, too. And the, and the Hopkinton defense looks like it's about to throw a shutout here. So that's no small task. No. Five. No, but if you, wa if you watched them last year, which I know you did, they, I mean, their defense last year was incredible. And I, they really have not missed – too much of a beat here, and they've no. got a lot of new faces on that defense. A lot of speed. Here we go, five minutes, 22 seconds. It is fourth. It can't be fourth down and two. Apparently it is. Fourth down and two. I was certain that catch by Deloitte was a first down, Don, but apparently not. No, I guess it wasn't. Just about two yards short. Hopkinton jumps off sides there. Now it'll make it fourth and long. That's their third and false and again, start. Coach Gerard can't be happy with this. Uh, no, and Coach Swanton, I believe, coaches the offensive line, so he's not—he's going to be even less happy. The field looks great. The field looks tremendous. Great job by the um, Hopkins and Buildings and Grounds Department to get this field looking in such great shape after the summer we've had. Pereira blitzes, oh. it's picked up there. Kelleher wisely just throws it away. A good job there by Brown. By yeah, by Matt Brown to pick up that blitz. Save his yeah. quarterback from taking a big hit. Yeah, he took he took the big hit and he's still kind of shaking it off here. Um, but he, he did save Ryan from taking a stick from a good football player. And Brown uh, came up and made a nice block there. Hopefully he shakes that off. Looks like he will. Well, that'll be a turnover on downs as the Hopkinton defense will come back on the field. Whalen now first and 10 at their own 39 with just over five minutes to play, down 20 to nothing. I think if you're Whalen here, Don, you want to finish this game with a score so you feel like you can take some momentum into next week. And at the same time, if you're Hopkinton, you want to pitch that shutout. Yeah. So you got 517. You would think they're... They would come out throwing. I mean, this kid, he, he's a dual threat. He can run and throw. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't thrown more. Bolivar back to take the snap. He rolls to his right. Doherty is all over him, chasing him down the field. Forces him out of bounds for what looks like maybe a two- or three-yard game. Good play by Ty Doherty to get in the backfield there. Yeah, Ryan kind of flushed them out. It was hard to see if that was a design rollout or if Doherty just kind of flushed them out of there. But either way, he uh, he was in pursuit and just kind of chased them out of bounds for uh, a short game. It'll make it second and six for Wayland. Boulevard back, time to throw. Now being flushed out, that's going to be a hold against yeah. Wayland. Yeah. 
pass is complete to number six, Ger German. But I got to think that's coming back. Looks like an obvious hold on Wayland. Yeah, Hopkinton doing a nice job both putting pressure on and covering with their linebackers and in their in their defensive backfield. I mean, they, they again, they um, they don't look like they've lost much as far as the scheme seems to be about the same, Looks and like uh, and and the speed. They don't really yeah. look like they've lost too much at all. Second and sixteen for Wayland at their own thirty-three. Bolivar back to throw. Throws down the middle, the pass is caught. Tackle is broken, still on his feet. He's out of bounds at the Hopkinton 45. Not sure who caught that ball for Wayland. Yeah, that, was a, that was a nice throw. The receiver made a nice cut. Uh, 22 Hurlery kind of uh, missed, uh, missed the tackle there. But he again recovered, didn't give up on it, and he was right in on the, on, on the tackle at the end. Number eight, Tommy Hamlet checks in at cornerback for the, for the Hillers. Getting his first action. Bolivar rolls out to his right. He's looking to throw. Ooh. And that pass is broken up. It's almost picked off. Almost picked off by Brown. Yeah, Don, it looks like Matt Brown just slid right in there for uh, last year's safety, Mike Ionelli, and they haven't missed a beat. Yeah, now, I, I, again, I guess I, I, we should we should know this, or I, I could certainly get this information. Was Matt the nose guard last year, or was he the... That was Ryan. Ryan was the Ryan nose Ryan was guard. the nose guard. So Matt, so Matt was the outside linebacker last year. Matt played outside <laughs> linebacker last year. It looks like he's playing safety this year. Mm -hmm. Interesting. To make up for the loss of uh, Mike Ionelli, now a West Point cadet. Bolivar back to throw quickly. Quick out pass to the left to it looks like Lampert. Not much of a gain there. It's Hops Hopkinson now making lots of substitutions on defense. Looks like Moynihan back in. Along with Kyle Stuckel. Bolivar back to throw again. Looking deep down the middle. That pass is going to be... Incomplete at the goal line. That was well covered. Well covered by is that number eight, Tommy Hamlet. Yeah, number eight, Hamlet had him uh, had him th th had him covered. This quarterback, he throws a weird ball. It kinda, yeah. it's a floater. It kind of goes up high and then drops in there. But he had a beat on the ball. If anything, that could have been offensive interference. This is it on fourth and nine here for Whalen with another four minutes to go. Bolivar takes a snap. It's Looks offsides. Like Flag Looks like Hopkinton may have jumped on. Huh? Yeah, they did. Which I guess on fourth and nine isn't the worst thing, but again, Coach Swanton can't be happy with some of these offside penalties by the line. Nope, nope. We're going to be extra running on Monday. Something tells you they may hear a comment or two in film session about that. <laughs> And so here we go, fourth and four. Fourth and four now for Wayland. Bolivar takes a snap, rolls right. Throwing it down the right sideline. That pass is incomplete again to Lampert, who's dropped a couple tonight. That would have been, that would have been a, a, a tall order there. I'm not sure he would have gotten his feet down. But it almost looked like he short-armed the, yep. the ball a little bit, like he was expecting to get hit. But um, I think either way, I think it would have been tough for him to uh, – to, to keep his feet in there. Well, Hopkinton will take over on downs. About three minutes and 41 seconds to play. An impressive performance by the Hopkinton defense. Well, as we look ahead, you know, it's going to be um – it's going to be interesting how they uh, need him next week, I believe. Who's also a, a tough, a tough test. Are are they? I mean, sometimes need them is terrible, and sometimes they're good. So I, I'm not really sure, but it's it's at home here, um, and then they they go at Norwood, which again you never know what you're getting down there. Zach uh, Frank with the carry for Hopkinton for it looked like a one yard loss, or maybe maybe just to the line of scrimmage. Um, that'll make it second and ten for Hopkinton. Then you got Ashland coming in here. Ashland on is now a TVL large team. September 28th. Um, 
which, you know, the way the uh, new setup is here with the playoffs and whatnot, uh, we're going to end up playing Ashland twice. There, that has happened with, uh, I know Holliston and Westwood have done it several years now, but now with Ashland back in the TVL large, um, we get to play them twice. So it's going to awesome. be it's going to be kind of different not seeing them just on thanksgiving but it's going to be great to have them come in here in september that'll be fun kelleher hands it off to i think zach frank again october 5th uh, will be the uh the annual game against holliston which uh, always a tough test always a tough test hopkinton won last year uh holliston's gonna have some players as always and that that'll be interesting to see how that plays always, out always well coached prepared then they're going to be uh, in the heat of the TVL large schedule there. They'll, they'll have Medfield at home on October 12th at 7 p.m. And then they go to Westwood on October 19th, uh, 7 p.m. Then the MIA playoffs start on October 26th, and we'll see how that uh, how the seedings go. And last year, I mean, I don't, how many home games do we end up having? A lot. A lot. <laughs> again, again, our salary didn't get increased. No. But uh, we had a lot of home games, and if the Hillers are, in, you know, get themselves in a position where they're winning, and they win the TVL large, we're going to be in the same situation here. So, you know, uh, folks out there watching, let's you know, keep your schedules open for Friday, October 26th, Friday, November 2nd, Friday, November 9th, because those Third are going to be playoff to games. The pitch is to 21 Frank. Takes it down the left side. He is driven out of bounds. Looked like just short of a first down. Yeah, he's still running hard. Um, is that Zach will, Zach will play to the whistle? Oh yeah. Well, it's it looks the like we're getting of the game. Looks like we're getting some new uniforms in there. Oh, okay. The punt team's coming in. Brendan Kelly in for his first punt of the season. Kelly with an end-over-end -end kick, a favorable bounce for Hopkins, and that's going to go all the way down to the goal line. Great punt by Brendan Kelly. Takes a hiller bounce. Yep, to the five-yard line. line. Pounced on by number 74, Ben Powers. Great punt for Brendan Kelly. Whalen now will come back onto the field. And uh, Hopkinson's going to win this one, Don. Yeah, now now it's just a matter of getting uh, getting out of here healthy. Um, you know, I, I think you'll start seeing some uniforms possibly go in and out, get some kids in there. Um, but you just want to get out of this game healthy now at this point and get on to. Um, you see a lot of starters still in there. Get on, get on and need uh, need them. You can follow the Hiller football program on Instagram at Hillers underscore football or on Twitter at Hopkinton football. Wayland handoff. And, of course, follow all your coverage of Hiller okay. football on HKM. I think both teams content to run the clock out here. Second and nine for Whalen. Two minutes left in the game. Handoff again up the middle. Pounce down by the Hopkin Hopkinson nope, defense. Got a little extra Looks activity like over here. Some extracurricular activity. 54 and 20. Between possibly the biggest guy in the team and the, and the smallest guy in the <laughs> no field. No kidding. What's going on there? 54 is huge. Number, number 20, Ty Scanlon mixing it up with, uh, <laughs> looks like to me, uh, Number 65. It was 50. It was 54. Nice job, coach. 54. Looks like it would be a flag against both players if I could imagine. So we will we'll redo second down. It looks like. Third down and nine for Wayland. Boulevard back. He hands it to. Not sure who that is for Wayland at this point. Wayland has a lot of their subs in as well. 
made a nice cutback, made a nice tough run. So it doesn't look like Whalen's looking to, to uh, throw the ball. In fact, this could be their punt team coming in right here. Fourth down and six for Whalen at their own 10. And uh, this does look like the Whalen punt team as they are content to kick this ball away and get on the bus and go home. This is a nice, a solid win for the Hillers. Big win. And a big win for the defense especially. You know, we've seen years where, you know, the offense takes a little bit to get going. Um, you know, the weak ones, you know, nobody's really in sync. I, I thought the beginning of our broadcast was a little rough. So, you know, week one you have to shake off the uh, speak off for the yourself, rust. Speak for yourself, Don. I'm I was in not my form. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, yeah, it was a long day today, Jay. Um <laughs> Nice punt there by the Whalen punter, almost out to midfield, and Hopkinton will take over for what would probably be a victory formation. Yep, you would with think. 38 seconds left. So Hopkinton's going to start out the season 1-0. and After Wait. following it up with an 11, they had 11, 11 win, uh, 11 win season last year, most wins in Hopkinton history. Starting out one and zero, uh, and you know, without knowing anything on what these other teams are, um, just looking at the Hopkinton football team, you've got a defense that's got a bunch of seniors on it. They've got speed. You've got an offensive line that's returning uh, five, four of the five kids. And you got a returning um, all-conference quarterback, and you've got some skill kids. And obviously, you know, Luke Deloya, he didn't play any offense last year and yeah, then, you know, Luke, this year is po Luke is poised to break out this year yeah I mean this year looks like, looks it, like they're going to get something from Zach Frank absolutely which you didn't even hear from really last year a little bit last year a little bit as a blocking back I would assume before the end of the season uh Kelly will have some big plays as well he's yep. just too big and too athletic not to not to make some plays you've got us um Cole Salyards playing uh, number three sophomore Cole Salyards big kid so it's a nice solid start these are the kind of kind of wins that Coach Gerard likes, and it's a great way to start the season for That'll Hopkinton do it. football. As Hopkinton will not have to take another snap. They're going to win this one 20 to nothing. Hopkinton players, Whalen players shaking hands as it's now just a formality. Hopkinton uh, players on the sideline very excited. Great way to start their senior season for a lot of these kids. And with a tough test against a good Whalen team. So, Don, that'll do it here from Dave Hughes Stadium. Uh, great win by the Hillers, 20 to nothing. Um, they go to 1-0, Whalen to 0-1. They have Needham next week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all again. Yeah, please tune in next week. And remember, we're going to be live uh, on YouTube next Friday night here at Dave Hughes Stadium. Everyone enjoy your weekend, and we will talk to you next week.